This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something different. Certainly, this is the HP Dragonfly Folio G3. So we've seen this before. It started out as a consumer laptop from HP with the faux leather. HP now calls it plastic or polyurethane. It's convincingly faux leather, let's put it that way design and it's an ultrabook with a pole forward display you can swap it around to a tablet if you want you use it like a traditional laptop or pull it forward which is kind of nice and handy if you're taking notes for example or if you're just watching a movie in a space constrained place 13.5 inch display and there's even an oled option as well with a three by two aspect ratio display sounds nice doesn't it we're going to look at it now. So being a part of HP's business line of PCs, you get HP Wolf Security with self-healing BIOS and protection, all those kinds of things. Also an 8 megapixel camera with Windows Hello IR sensor as well. So they've got some of your con security concerns covered. But check out our sponsor right now for some more security aware software. So the holiday season has just passed. You've gotten that new laptop, PC, smartphone, whatever. And now you need some virus protection and more for it, which comes to our sponsor, Trend Micro Premium Security Suite. So this is a one-stop shopping app. It isn't just virus and malware scanning, though it does that too, and it's nice and lightweight in that. It's also a password manager, so you don't have to go and get yourself a separate password manager. It's a VPN too, so you don't have to go get a VPN service. And it's got things like ID monitoring on the dark web as well and also child protection in terms of you protecting your kid from unsafe websites so you've got a bunch of granular controls about and set the age range of your child to make sure they're not going places where they should be with their phone or computer so speaking of that when you go ahead and get this you get 10 licenses so no nickel and diming you to add more on and it works not just on mac and on windows it works on android phones and tablets and ios devices as well be sure to use the link in the description to get a discount to check them out and now back to our video so things to like about this besides the 3 by 2 aspect ratio display with optional OLED is also ips options which are 1920 by 1280 and you can get that as HP is usually insanely mirror-like display option, which we have, but they also have an etched glass matte option, which I would find tempting as well. And there's the thousand nit privacy display option because, well, again, business laptops, some people need that sort of thing. The keyboard on this is also to like, it's very tactile and crisp. It's shockingly good, actually. At 13.5 inches, it might seem a little small if you're coming from a big laptop, but for those who are used to ultrabooks, it's fine. And the real star of the show here is the pull forward display. And it's a pretty, I won't say completely unique design. We've seen Microsoft do this in, one of, in their Surface line and so on. And Sony do it way back when they still made BIOS. But I, it's a very clever idea of being able to pull it forward and bypass that keyboard. It's not in your way anymore if you're just taking notes, but you want it to be a bit upright, likewise watching movies on the tray table on the airplane. But then you can flip it and use it in full tablet mode if you want, or just forget about all that when you just need to use it as a laptop. It works surprisingly well and that hinge design is proved durable for HP. The faux leather on the outside and well obviously black I, it's made of polyurethane so it should be in other words fairly durable as long as you don't use it for your knife throwing practice duh you know something like that keep it away from insanely sharp objects. It probably will wear very well in fact a little bit more sturdy than leather but without the patina of leather. Anyway one of the improvements they've made here is to not covered the whole laptop it covers the lid and wraps around the hinge and then the bottom is your usual metal bottom cover on this and now it can be basically unsnapped and removed to make it easier to service which makes sense because while hp's specter and consumer line laptops they really don't have user servicing in mind for business laptops they do it because the it department will just say don't buy these if it's too hard to open it up inside it's your typical ultrabook we'll we'll take a look at it Okay, before you take off the bottom cover on each side, there is a Phillips head screw underneath. There's a little plastic cover right in there. This is where the Phillips head screw goes. Just pop this off with your fingernail. Don't need any special tool. And then you can get to the screw. So do that on each side. And then we can switch to the bottom where you basically just massage off the leather cover. It's pretty easy, actually. In fact, it started doing it for itself. So you just pull it like that. There's little plastic snaps that hold it in place. And you work your way down. 
So once we've done that, and you can see why we did that, because there are three Torx T5 screws here to unscrew, and this one, and then you can just lift it off. We we'll use a suction cup, take off the bottom cover, and here we have the internals, dual fans for basically a convertible tablet design. That's pretty impressive with big heat pipes here. Cooling was clearly suddenly important to HP, and that's a good thing. We have an M.2 SSD here, so yes, that is replaceable and upgradable. RAM is soldered on board. You can get it with 16 or 32 gigs of low power DDR5 RAM. The SSD is available on 256 gigabyte all the way up to one terabyte, and that's PCIe 4. So the M.2 socketed 5G card that's right over here, battery, and two of the speakers. There are four total, so there are two up firing and there's two down firing. The idea being no matter what position you put it in, convertible, tablet, laptop, you'll hear some sound, and the sound is decent given the size of the machine. So as we've seen, now there's another important addition here, the fan. Now this is, these use Intel U-series CPUs and vPro. So for those who are thinking, oh, Intel 12th generation is passe because Intel has announced 13th gen, vPro usually take a long time to come out. So it'll be probably months and months before we see this one refresh with a new processor. But what we have inside is actually, we've got a fan now and vents on both sides. So what does that mean? That means that performance can be a bit better. It's a U-series CPU. This is going to go up against the P-series used in Surface Pro 9 or the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga, which are 28 watt. This one is 15 watt, but it does give it more room to literally breathe. And that was something that did hold the folio back in days of old. Performance on this is good. It's, it's obviously this is probably a business and executive kind of person's laptop here. This is not for Photoshop jockeys to spend 40 hours a week doing stuff like that or any super demanding thing or Excel accounting pros with their multi-thousand line spreadsheets. But for everyday business stuff, Zoom calls, all the things that everyday people do, it's fine. I mean, and it can do Photoshop. I'm not saying it can. It's not disgraceful performance by any means. But if you're looking to do video and photo editing heavy duty, then obviously you're probably not going to be looking at this. Surface temperatures, thanks to the U-series CPU and having actual active cooling now, are fine on this. You're not really going to feel any heat or notice a whole lot of noise coming out of this. Again, it's the perfect executive slash business laptop. Nobody's going to give you a dirty look in a meeting because your laptop is roaring loud or something like that. Given that it's a business laptop, we have not only Intel X211 Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth 5.3, but we have optional, your choice of Intel 4G LTE or a 5G Intel 5000 series modem, which is sub-6 only, not millimeter wave, and basically it's a partnership with MediaTek and Fibicom who make the modem, and that's an M.2 socketed card on board, so that's nice to see. Now the display on ours, we have the base IPS display, 1920 by 1280 resolution, again 3 by 2 aspect ratio, supporting pen and touch. By the way, that pen now magnetically attaches to the side and charges, it's Wacom AES. But anyway, the display itself as a base option display isn't bad. Again, it's not for professional content creators. In terms of the color gamut, it's decent. You got near full sRGB coverage. Uh, the color calibration is not particularly good, you can see from the color accuracy graph, but the contrast is really high on this and it shows that what it's meant for is really good viewing clarity for text contrast helps with that and to make movies and photos look sharp it's a it's a pleasing display don't get me wrong it's just not clearly a content creator option but then they do offer the 3000 by 2000 pixel OLED display option all of the displays are 400 nits except for that thousand nit privacy screen so let's talk about that pen a little bit more. It's Wacom AES, and it has a good set of software features. Two buttons on it, and you can program it to do a wide variety of things with those two buttons. It kind of reminds me of a Wacom tablet or something like that. It's nice to see that option available to us instead of the usual, well, you can't do much of anything to say what your buttons do. I, it, it's very pleasant to use. I like it for note taking. There is some jitter if you're doing the slow diagonal lines. This is not intended for artists, but honestly, it felt better than the jitter looked when it came to things like trying to sketch with it. it it's well done, and I do like that it's rechargeable and magnetically attaches to the side. It gets you only so far that magnetically attaches. Of course, you'll knock it off in a bag and have to search for it in the bottom of the bag, but hey, I'll take it. Battery life, well, we have a 53 watt hour battery, which for a compact laptop is pretty good. It's right up there with Dell XPS 13 and other competitors. And you have a 65 watt USB-C charger. So you're gonna use lose one of those Thunderbolt ports slash USB-C for charging it. Oh, well, that, but universality is good. 
battery life on this with a display set at 200 nits, doing mixed productivity work, a little video conferencing, that sort of thing, is eight to nine hours, which is pretty good for a laptop of this kind. Now, if you get the OLED display, you're gonna get worse battery life. It's higher resolution and OLED is less power efficient when displaying your typical white backgrounds like in Microsoft Word or in web pages and that sort of thing. But so it, it's pretty decent overall. The port situation, we know that. You've seen it already. It's constrained. You've got your two Thunderbolt 4 ports. You have a headphone jack. You'll have that nano SIM card slot if you go with the 4G or 5G options. And that is pretty much it. So that's the HP Dragonfly Folio G3 with V Pro processors inside, a 3 by 2 aspect ratio and display, pen included with touchscreen nice keyboard and this unique pull forward design if you find that attractive useful tempting well it's for you and the faux leather i mean i still have a soft place for this literally soft place for this it just looks nice it's grippy uh, it doesn't show fingerprints too much it's durable it's nice to see companies not all doing the exact same thing i'm lisa from mobile tech review be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid